my name is Roman. I am from northern Ukraine and I will show you how to propagate hazelnuts by a simple but very effective method called uh, mound layering. So look, these are our hazelnut bushes. So you see any difference? This hazelnut bush wasn't cut uh, to the ground in uh, springtime and so but it still have some number of new shoots that we are going to propagate it's I think maybe around eight or something but this bush look at this bush this bush was cut was cut in the early spring in the March down to the ground and it uh, produced I think it was around 20 of new shoots and we thinned those shoots up to around 10 and uh, made a mount, a mount to propagate the hazelnut to obtain new hazelnut plants so but it's frankly speaking it's a very tricky question I don't know it for sure maybe you know you can uh, provide your comments whether to cut down hazelnut bushes uh, for the purpose of propagation or not because sometimes when I cut uh, hazelnut bushes it just dies the bush just dies after it was cut in the early spring sometimes it's okay and sometimes uncutted bushes do not provide any new shoots any new shoots do not provide any new shoots but sometimes like in the case with this hazelnut it provided a great many new shoots that are very good for uh, propagation so it's how it is how it looks like and now i will show you the way how to propagate the hazelnuts so look we will we will deal with this little bush with this little bush it was cut in uh, early march up to the ground down to the ground uh, so and look it ha now it has i think around 20 20 shoots uh, today is 28th uh, june 2020 and uh, I, I will show you how to construct the mount so the first thing we need to do to thin the bush because there are so many shoots and they are competing shoots and if we uh, try to do it like this i'm not really sure that uh, i can obtain high quality new plants in autumn in fall so i need to thin it to thin it i take my just pruner and i i know these two shoots are broken so i delete them so i just delete i just remove uh, weaker shoots and uh, let stronger more vigorous shoots to remain in place and i should and i also provide some space for root formation so it must be like three four five centimeters around two inches between new shoots for adequate root formation So look, I'm thinning them and you should leave one shoot as a nursery shoot for your future hazelnut bush. So I think this shoot, ah no, this, not, this one is not the most rigorous one. I think this one is the most rigorous one. So I will let it grow as a nursery shoot for next years. So guys look look I think I think the bush and now let's count one two three four seven uh, seven and twelve twelve shoots are left twelve shoots are left including one shoot that will be a nursery shoot 
that we will not uh, process in any case. So the next step guys, we need to take a knife and just scratch the bird. There are different approaches, some people attach wire, girdle, girdle the shoots with wire for root formation, but it's a very long work to do and uh, my personal experience that scratching bark is enough because, because you, using that wire it's very time consuming and I don't think it's needed. So you scratch shoots just a little bit above the ground so you should take into account that roots will form in the area where you are scratching the bark. So it must be just a little bit of the ground. Why? Why it must be a little bit up, up the ground? Because uh, if you do it just exactly down the ground, the shoots will grow into the main soil, and it will be difficult to extract them. So that's why I advise to scratch just, I think, just three centimeters or around one inch above above the ground. And we do not scratch the nursery shoot because we will not extract it from the bush. It will live a longer life. So okay, okay, we have already scratched the barks, the barks of our shoots, and now we need to apply the hormone, the rooting the hormone. So I will show you what I use as a rooting hormone. So look, guys. It's, look, I hope it's visible. It's easy accessible on eBay. It's called Idol or Indol. Sorry for my English. I didn't graduate from uh, Harvard or Oxford universities. So Andol 3 butyric acid or it's just uh, shortened to E I B A. And uh, there are two kind of IBA rooting hormone. Uh, water soluble and uh, alcohol soluble. In the past we used alcohol soluble IBA hormone and it worked pretty well. This year I was looking on eBay for alcohol soluble hormone and I failed to find it. So I bought water soluble hormone. You know those hazelnut bushes maybe they like to drink uh, just alcohol a little bit but I hope. So it's water soluble hormone. It's called IBAK. So if there's K available, it means that it can be can be saluted in, in water. So guys, here is the ready solution. What I do, I take my brush, I take my brush and I paint I paint the shoots with the solution all around so the roots will appear in this area where the bark is scratched and where the rooting hormone is applied. So like this. So now we are applying the rooting hormone for better root formation. The rooting hormone is not a must. You can create mound and propagate hazelnuts without a rooting hormone, but with the rooting hormone things works much better, maybe not much better, it's just better. So I apply the hormone all around the new shoots. And again, no, no hormone for, for the nursery shoot because it will not be extracted from the bush. Okay, I think it's all, all done now. So now we need to do the most important part most work and stand extensive part of our job we need to build that mount with that very reliable device that device works pretty well very very effective one so I will show you how to build the mount 
some weeds, removing all the weeds. See the mount should be just 20 25 centimeters tall, like slightly less than one foot. That looks like a mountain, it looks like a little volcano, you know. But it actually needs to look like a little volcano. I mean, it needs to have some some flat or even not flat but little pit inside why it's needed it's needed for water is absorption so if there is rain that mound should keep that rain and it will let the new plants to to do better so but it's not all after you constructed the mole the mound you need to take a bucket of water and put it inside the mound. It's very, very important because there will be no root formation without enough moisture. And uh, of course, if you have time and necessary resources, you can water your mound from time to time. Uh, it's a, if you do so regularly, it will be a great chance that you will obtain high quality, well-rooted new plants in in the fall so guys it's all over now uh, thank you very much for your attention if you like this video please like this video please su subscribe to our channel uh, thank you very much stay uh, safe and healthy